Good evening. Welcome, everyone, to Rotor Talk Live Season 3, Episode 11, uh, Xeno 2 Successes, and Autel, and should Autel and uh, DJI uh, postpone their releases? Marcus, how are you this evening? Do, doing just fine, Bill. Uh, good evening. Yeah, uh, you know, kind of hunkering down at home. It, uh, you know, I couldn't have flown a drone today anyway. It rained all day. So, yeah, just taking it easy, man. Lauren, how are you this evening? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. Had a good day. I was, uh, I was, as I was saying earlier today, uh, somebody donated me a free controller for my I like that uh, for my Mavic Two Pro. So uh, I've now got dual controls. Life is good. Well, Life is right. good. Absolutely. Yeah. And Mr. Ron Brown, how are you this evening? Well, I don't doing well. We got up early this morning to head out to the grocery store to get supplies. You know, uh, it's hard to get stuff in the grocery store now with this. Uh, I don't want to make this the virus show, but uh, so we got we kind of got stocked up now. Whatever we went out at seven a.m. this morning, and the store was packed already. But uh, it was success, and uh, got home today. I tried to fly the Zeno two a little bit this afternoon, but I was dealing with hurricane winds again so I, oh, geez. yeah i i just brought it right down again it, it was no use uh, uh messing with it but uh anyway so yeah all's good ready for a good show tonight i uh i heard a rumor that that uh lauren's gonna drop a hot hot a hot hot info on us tonight so i'm sitting here in pins and needles uh <laughs> Uh, Bill, you've been working at home this week, right? Uh, yeah, well, um, because of um, because because of my health conditions, I've now been allowed to work from home, telecommute until the virus threat is over. So, I want to thank my employer for 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 that uh, very much. So, um, I don't know if I'm going to drive my wife crazy when she starts to be able to work from home as well. But uh -oh. hey, you know. Well, it's it's like nothing but dri like driving each other crazy together. Okay, that's that's the name of the game here. Okay, and like you, I'm gonna be hitting the grocery store tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. because as I told Lauren and Marcus, I spent two and a half hours after work trying to find one of life's essentials that everybody seems to be wanting to hoard right now, and I had it in my cart three times. Nobody has it in stock right now, so. Hopefully, I get lucky tomorrow morning. A truck stop at the store, and I can get some. So, anyway, with all that being said, okay, we've had some successes with the Zeno 2, okay, and it was an absolute pleasure to see the videos from Ron and Marcus that they put out of their flights with the Zeno 2. So, gentlemen, carry take it away here. Um, tell us about your flights. Tell us about how how it flew. Tell us about you and your videos look look superb, by the way. They really did. I'm like I said, you know, I was impressed with the Xeno One videos and just that much more with the Xeno Two. I mean, I really think they've sharpened things up. So Ron or Marcus, have at it. I'll, I'll go first. Uh so yeah, really honestly, uh just kind of what you described, Bill. Uh man, I, I had a great flight. Uh, it, it is an impressive uh piece of technology. Particularly when you when you look at the, the price point, that three hundred ninety nine dollar price point, the camera on it uh, is superb. I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm not saying it's a Mavic Pro, but it's got a nice four K camera on it. Uh, it flies very well. And the thing that I'll tell you is, it's a powerhouse, man. That thing will haul the mail. You put it in sport mode, and it really gets moving. Uh, I had an issue with the gimbal uh, when I was out at the canyon. Put it in sport mode, and the gimbal kind of, you know, I was full stick forward. Had a crosswind coming out of the canyon, and the gimbal kind of went wonky on me. But it, as soon as I slowed down, it came back. And then uh, yesterday, I got a flight in at the local park, and I wanted to retest that and see how it went. Uh, and it, it was just fine. It uh, yesterday. I, I, I put it in sport mode and, and uh, went full stick forward and had no issues with the gimbal. So I am quite sure that that was related to the crosswind uh, out there at the canyon. Uh, you know, had some. Had, there's, I, I'm still having some issues with landings. I know uh, uh, Ron had a, has felt like he's corrected his. Uh, it doesn't seem to go into landing mode for me, so I need to mess around with that some more. Uh, you know, when it comes down, if you're trying to manually land it, uh, I've had it come down and even it's on the pad 
and it's still spinning the uh, the the props. And you know, I had one prop spin up, and I thought it was going to tip over, and so forth. Others have reported similar experiences, so uh, so we'll have to work with that. I'm sure it's something we can get uh, figured out. But uh, other than that, I'm I'm giving it a, a good grade, and we're just going to have a blast with it. It's it's really fun to fly, and we're just going to have a lot of fun. Ron. Uh, uh, well said, Marcus. I agree with all your points, and and I just want to throw in real fast. I want to wish everybody a happy St. Patrick's Day out there. Forgot to say at the top of the show. I mean, unfortunately, most St. Patrick's Day celebrations here in the United States have been canceled because of the uh, coronavirus. And even uh, one of our super fans, Stevie Ewing, reported to me today that even in Dublin they canceled uh, the uh, uh, St. Patrick's Day festivities. So. Um, yeah, uh, definitely, um, you know, strange days indeed, as they used to say. But but on to the Xeno 2. I mean, Mark, I, I agree with everything Marcus said. And I, to not kind of repeat what he said, I'm going to put this in kind of layman's terms here. Um, you know, the Xeno 2 has, you know, I mean, the Xeno 1 had a good 4K camera. I mean, it looked good. And you know, some of the other drones I had, like, you know, like I had Marcus Phoebe for a while and, uh, you know, a couple of other these um, – for, uh, kind of advanced toy grade 4K drones. I mean, they look good to do drone videos, but I never really took them out to record, you know, my other videos, my kind of travel videos and my beach videos and stuff like that. But the Xeno 2, what I've seen from the footage so far, I won't be afraid to take it out and, and actually use it for real filming besides just drone videos or drone reviews. I mean, I may, you know, sunsets and beach shots and sunrises and, you know, going down to wildwood and catch amusement park i mean i that's how impressed i am with the uh quad and i haven't posted this video yet but get ready i've been color grading some of the um the video of uh, the my last flight which is unpublished yet where it was completely sunny and uh i have it in final cut and i have it you know i'm, I'm playing with the color wheels on that uh you know that uh, I, I don't know what term but anyhow uh, the, the the colors and stuff are very well balanced in that coming right off the memory card, so it's very impressive. So, um, where are you flying today, Ron? Pardon? Where are you flying today? I, I I just flew for just a couple minutes. It's too windy, but I flew. I had a good flight Sunday at the beach. It, it was the first time I flew it in, in like I'm going to call it a sunny day. I flew it in a kind of a mostly cloudy day in a. Partly Friday, but but Sunday I had a complete sunny day. And uh, now I did find the issue where if you fly towards the sun, for the first time I did see the lens flare, but it wasn't as pronounced as I've seen other people have it, and and it was a little overexposed. But I've already found a hint today. I had another sunny day today. In my five minutes I did fly. I put the Paranafi um, ND32 slash polarizer filter on, and that really seemed to cure um, all the. Um, Overexposures and um, camera flare issues. So um, yeah, Bill, it's um, I I'm really looking forward. I mean, I know it's got the small issues we've talked about, the landings and the hoverings and the sensors maybe not being uh, working as well as they should or as strong as they are. So it's got issues, but I mean, the, the camera and again the um, the horsepower of that thing. I mean, you, you know, even a day like today when I caught a hurricane. I kept it low and close, but still, I mean, it can handle almost any wind and throw down. I mean, it, it's on Mavic 2 level of handling the wind. And I, I know I'm going to get some heat for saying that, but, you know, it, it, it's in that ballpark. Anyway. No, no here, Ron, I want to reiterate that, too. So when, you, when we're describing that it's a powerful drone, it's very speed-wise, and when you hit that stick, it's very comparable to the Mavic 2. Okay, at least I, I won't get shot too much here. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, that's... Why are you looking at me when you say that? <laughs> we're, looking at, we're looking at Lauren now. <laughs> I, I don't want, the, I don't want the, the... I'm calling, I'm calling the, the GJI uh, com, com, uh, commandos uh, coming after me. <laughs> well, you know, that that's something to hear about being able to handle the wind because that's one of the things that I heard about the, the first, you know, was don't take it up in the wind when it's really windy. You know, just don't even don't even do it. But so, the Zeno two, from you know, Marcus said, it, it, Marcus almost. It, I kind of felt like when Marcus was saying this, he says, "I put the pedal to the metal." I said, "What you in your vet?" And he says, "No." When I was flying the Zeno two, um, but you know, the horsepower that this has is amazing. I mean, well, well, well I'll give you an example, Bill. Remember when Marcus tested the um, the little uh, Mavic Mini 
at yeah. the, at the State Canyon. And remember, he got it too far away. And he got he got in the wrong side of the wind, and he had he never got it back. He had to land at kind of a neutral landing point. Well, uh, Marcus, if that would have been the Zito too, uh, would you have got it all the way home? It, the the Zito too could have carried the Mavic Mini on its back, probably as well as. Probably could have carried three Mavic Minis on its back. But yeah, it's still would have got I made it home, right? Yeah, yeah. Here's a, here's an idea for a video. I've never seen anything like this, but it, it, it's it's an idea, okay? Um, take off, have have a Mavic Mini on top of a Zeno 2, okay? Maybe take off about 10 feet and then just l let the Zeno 2 go and then take the Mavic Mini off from on top of the Zeno 2. You know, you know who would do that? That's you an know? Al Duran video. Yeah, that Al Duran just Al would you're probably, right. He, yeah, he he would do that. Yeah. You're right. That's not that sounds like something that Al would do. Well, okay, my travails, all right. I emailed my contact with Hubson on Monday and I heard this today. Nothing. I haven't gotten anything. I mean, she told me last I knew we're shipping on Monday. We'll get you a FedEx tracking number. You'll get it by Friday. So where mine is, who knows, okay? I don't. I have no idea at this point. So I'm going to probably email her again tomorrow, as far as that's concerned. So I mean, You're crickets. Then. Yeah, I'm hearing. I'm hearing crickets in, in this. What we want to spend. Uh, well, I, I just also want to touch base on Ron briefly mentioned it, and Marcus too. Um, there's been some issues that have been discovered when you get under, I'll say maybe 20 feet with a Zeno two. All right. Um, you're going to, you need to land. Okay. You can't dilly dally. Okay. You need to get your, your finger down on that stick because, you know, if, if there's any hesitation at all, um, you know, Marcus had some toilet bowling that happened the other day and, you know, Ron had some, you know, had some mad pilot skills to land his the other day. And, you know, I'm thinking, yeah, this is very solvable. This is, this is a firmware update kind of an issue. So stay tuned for that. I, uh, I firmly believe that that will happen. And then, you know, getting a good understanding what those sensors do underneath the Zeno 2 as well, too. So, you know, and I think that's just something we're all coming to grasp with because, you know, the original Zeno didn't have have the optical flow sensor under there. So, you know, stay tuned. You know, this is this is the fun of getting these new drones. You know, we get them out there and we test them and hopefully we have some good weather. OK, like Ron said, he had he had high winds today. Marcus had rain today. Um, I don't have a Zeno 2 to test today. So, um, you know, that's where we're at with this. Now, the main topic of the evening, and you know, I feel like ringing a bell at a boxing match here, okay? This one, this one's probably going to stir up a lot of emotions on this one, all right? Uh-oh. Should Autel and DJI postpone their drone releases, okay? Now, we're going to go around the room here. And you know who I'm going to start with? Okay. I'm going to start with Lauren because Lauren says he's going to drop a bomb on <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> okay. Uh, latest information I got, uh, we were expecting the new Mavic in April or May. Uh, first I heard May, but now uh, it might be June or later. And the basic thing is they said, why have a party when the room's empty? If that makes sense to you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. That makes With a lot of sense. So many countries being locked down and stuff like that. Uh, I'm hearing that there could be no final decision yet, but uh, we could be looking at June or July or even later, possibly now. Okay. So. Hey, so, so there might be a silver lining, Lauren. I, I hear what you're saying, but that ought to give them plenty of time to produce a bunch of them. And then when they have that introduction, we can order it and have it a week later, right? Maybe. I don't know about you, but I've never had a problem getting them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Marcus, I had to go there. Oh, man. I'm going to order from you, Lauren. <laughs> can, can you actually, that? That, that's more of a dig against Bill because he can't get his Zeno, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lauren just gets his, his the box. Oh, there's mine. Yeah. Put it aside, okay. We're ready to go here, kind of a thing. Um, you know, this is a good thing. I'm glad, glad Lauren, Lauren gave us this information here because you know, um, Autel is just like on the cusp. It was supposed to be the end of this month that you could be able to, you know, um, order your Zeno two or well, Zeno twos, order your your Evo twos, and be able to take delivery of them like in early April. 
and you know well rick smith put out a video you know we're shipping already and i'm like uh i don't think so rick but you know um I, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go there but you know the, the, there's a time to take pause and, and, and to take stock of the situation and of things and you know um unless your head's been in a hole in the ground the last 30 days I think, you know, you know, something's facing all of us. It's a common denominator. It unites all of us. It crosses, um, you know, all races, creeds, religions, national origin, political lines, everything. It crosses everything, okay? It's, it's life and death. It's a, re it's a real kind of thing. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, having to take some of the measures that the governments are taking, like the government here in the United States, you know, it's 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 some serious economic impacts and some serious decisions and and some difficult ones, but they need to be made. And, and I think this is a this is a no brainer for me. I think for me, I think Autel should say we're just going to wait until this is over. What do you guys think? I think realistically, if if the product has already been announced and, and they've announced availability dates, go ahead and do it. You know, uh, do your online sales. But if it hasn't been announced officially, like the new DJI one, since you haven't officially announced it, you haven't broken any trust with the customer, right? But since uh, Autel has kind of put their dates forward, we're going to make these available on such and such a date. It makes them look bad if they don't do it. Does that make sense? Makes yeah. sense. Um, you know, one of the things I, I can tell you is, you know, remember when the Evo One came out, and you know, it was at CES that year, and there was a big production about that. And then in February, they had, um, you know, the FCC Grand ID with the pictures and everything, and all the data, and everybody knew everything about the Evo. Everybody's thinking, okay, we're gonna, it's, it's, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And finally, end of June, beginning of July, it, it arrived. Okay. So I think there was a bad taste in people's mouths from having to wait for the Evo as long as they did. I mean, it was, it was a labor of love, you know. And, and I can say this Autel people, which, you know, I'll call myself an Autel person, you know, are diehards. They they really they really stick by the company and the company has done in in my terms and customer service they've been fantastic because I had some issues with my X Star Premium um, you know they sent me new batteries without having to send it, send the old battery back um, I was impressed with how they handled it so um, you know Lauren makes a pretty valid point as far as far as that's concerned but do you guys think that this is gonna what are your thoughts Ron and Marcus what do you think about this. Hey, Bill, just uh, a little bit of uh, uh, housekeeping here. I'm hearing a little bit of feedback from somebody, so I'm not sure where that's coming from. Uh, but with regard to Autel, I kind of agree with Lauren. If they've got it ready to ship and ready to go, and 90% of those uh, sales are online, uh, gosh, I think I'd just move forward with it. And that way they're not going to disappoint their customers uh, anymore. And uh you know, they, they have proven that they're a customer service oriented uh, company. So I think it would do them, do them some good. Ron? Uh, Marcus, thank you. Um, and, and Bill, I, 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 I'm not sure. It sounds like the echo is coming from, from you or whatever, but I, I'm not positive. Okay. I've checked my uh, audio. But um, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I hate, I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to be slight here or snarky, but uh you know, drone deliveries are so slow coming. I don't think anybody has to stop them or slow them down. They don't make it on time anyways most of the time. I mean, um, you know, uh, when's the last drone shipped on time? The, the, I'll give you an example, the Mavic Mini. I pre-ordered the Mavic Mini at the end of October at some point, and I didn't get it until almost Thanksgiving. So th there's my most recent, you know, well, and, and then I ordered the Xeno 2, December 17th. I didn't get it until like March 13th. So, I mean, th there's the last two drones I pre-ordered. So, I mean, drones don't need help in slowing down. I mean, the, who knows? We, we, I mean, the Evo, it, it's all, they said that Evo would arrive at the middle, the second, second half end of March, right? Well, today, as far as I could tell, it's the uh, 17th of March. Would you call that the second half of, of March, Bill? 
I sure would. And do, did 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 you see any Evo two for sale uh, anywhere online or at Best Buy, or whatever? No, I did not. So point point being made, they don't really need they don't purposely need to slow down anything, and I and and I don't see how it could hurt anything. I I you know with the virus gone because uh, you know UPS and and the delivery companies are are still going to work, and um, you know they have I mean this they have to have something to, the the deliver. And, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people that fly out of their backyards, even they get the drone, they're not leaving. They're not going someplace where it's a group of 50 people more. If you say if you fly out of your own backyard like Bill does, how how's that going to spread the uh, corona anymore if he's flying on his lake in his backyard? So, uh, hey, yeah. hey, Ron, I'll, I'll add to that. Just like you, when you go out to the beach, you're out there by yourself. There's nobody around you. Right. Same thing, even when I go to the park. I'm nowhere near anybody. It's a big park, right? So you get out there by yourself and nobody's around you. So, yeah, there's no reason you can't fly. And worse comes to worse, like I said, I've got places I can go out in the middle of nowhere to, to fly. And trust me, there won't be anybody around. Yeah, <laughs> I, exactly yeah. what I'm going to be doing during the, the big hoo-ha. Because I'm, I'm going to go out flying and I'm going to do lots of pictures and, and some video and stuff like that. Why not? You know, you're self isolating. No, yeah, yeah exactly. You know, that makes yeah. that makes a lot of sense. And and this is something, you know, um, I'm gonna wrap this up and then we're gonna talk about this. This is this is an, another topic. I didn't include it in the list, but um, you know, you guys make a great point as far as Autel is concerned. And and I think, you know, if you've made a if you've made a date out there and if you've told your customers, you know, this drone is gonna be available by this day okay and you know from everything that we're hearing you know all the software issues which were the delay the reason for this delay have been have been addressed and fixed and you know they're sitting boxes ready to go um you know let's get the show on the road now i think one of the things that autel really needs to do in this instance all right um you know the ordering process was kind of scattered it was you know dealers were saying you know we'll take a deposit from you and I, and hold this and and everything, which which is okay. But what I think what Autel needs to kind of firm this up a little bit and say, you know, um, you know, let's get a process in place because with Autel, you know, it, it's really, you know, you really didn't have a choice. You had to order it through a dealer. Okay, they weren't available through the website, which is completely opposite model of what how DJI works. I mean, DJI makes it available, you know. They, they make it available on the website and to dealers as well. So, you know, it, it's what I, I, what Autel, I think, needs to do is to do it both ways, okay, to be able to make it available on their website and also to dealers at the same time and have this coordinated. Because, you know, if they didn't have it coordinated, it's going to end up being a mess like it was last time, and you don't want that, okay? And then I know this time around there were people that had put deposits down and had to get refunds and and everything with a, a delay announcement and all this, you know, that leaves a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. Okay. They want to be able to get their drones, you know, without, without, without having to go through all this, without, without having to, having to, having to do this. Warren brought up a great subject. And this is something that I wanted to spend some time on tonight was, okay. You know, um, for me, I'm really kind of going to be, you know, quote unquote housebound. I, I am officially, telecommuting full-time until the pandemic has, has, has ceased or is the threat isn't there or whatever. You know, um, I know um, Ron said he went out, did some grocery shopping today. Lauren said they're kind of going to shut things down where, where he works. And then, you know, Marcus and, and Sarah are going to kind of hunker down as well too. You know, going flying during this time, you know, and, and Lauren already mentioned it. He said, I'm heading out. I'm going to do this. You know, I'm not around people. You know, um, you know, Marcus, your thoughts on this? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, that's just what 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 I was talking about. As long as we can, I think it's important that we that we heed the recommendations that are coming down uh, from the government and and self isolate. If we can flatten that curve, sounds like a good idea to me, and and makes a lot of sense. And you know, the life you save may be your own. Uh, but getting out there and, and flying, there's just there's just so many places. Bill, obviously, you have an ideal situation right out your backyard there, and then uh, and and uh, gosh, you know, Ted Bowman's in the in the chat here. You know, here in Idaho, 
we just have so many places we could go and never see another human being. And I know Lauren has the same. Situation. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and Ron, I've seen Ron's videos, even though he's right there in the middle of Margate this time of year, he goes out on that beach. There, there's nobody there, you know? So, so he can buy uh, all he wants and, and avoid that, uh, that kind of content. So, and, and to, to your point, Bill, Gosh, it just makes you feel so good, and you forget your troubles. You get that bird up in the air, and it's just you get so focused on what you're doing, flying, and uh, and and I don't know about you guys, but and by the time I land that drone, I have the biggest grin on my face that, that you know you just can't you just can't wipe it off. Lauren, how do you feel about it? Oh, absolutely. The only problem is I want uh, Bill to send the biggest box he've got he's got of his weather up to me. <laughs> last week, last weekend we got down to minus twenty-five Celsius, so mm. that kind of cut out the uh, the flying for a couple of days. And now it's Ooh. starting to warm up, and and hopefully we're going to be out uh, flying this weekend. I've got uh, somebody new I'm going to be training, and uh, so that's the plan for me. And I've got some nice little hideaways that I like to go that are quite scenic, and who knows, maybe I'll have to post some of that. Uh, but Bill, a minute. Did, did you have the air conditioner on today? Yes, I did have the air conditioner. Hey, thanks, Ron. Rub it in, I Ron. Tell you, Rub it I won't tell you that it hit 90 degrees today here in Florida, and we started to have some humidity, which is actually a welcome relief because, according to the experts, you know, the high temperatures and humidity, the virus can't survive with that. So I think that's kind of a blessing in disguise. But, Ron, your thoughts about getting out um, on the beach and flying now? Well, yeah, um, you know, uh, I, I figured, we have, give me the give me the the, the question again. I, I've kind of golf track here. No, no, no. Okay, during this during the hiatus here, where we're you know housebound, if you want to call it that, okay. during the during the during the during the um you know the the fifteen day cooling off period, as the president talks about, yeah. and telling everybody you know not to not not, not to commingle and everything. What do you think about being able to you know what, about going out and flying? Just you know, just to do it, just for the sake of being able to do it now. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm continuing flying, just as everybody said. I mean, I, I fly pretty much in seclusion, anyway. So nothing's nothing's going to change me. I, I mean, I live in a in a summer resort town, and it's a ghost town now. So I mean, uh, beyond drone flying, I've been in isolation for months, anyway. So there's nobody around here. I mean, out around large groups or anything like that to begin with. And yeah, I'm just going to continue flying because. Um, Again, it, it, it's it's in isolation, and uh, I'm out in such you know, most time I'm flying in such wind or whatever. The virus even if it was around; it'd be very little chance it could fly my direction or whatever. You know, um, so um, yeah, I, I'm I, I, as far as drone fly, I'm kind of continuing life as normal. I mean, I, again, I, I try not to you know go go in stores, and of course not going. To, oh, here we've closed restaurants down. A lot of things have been closed here, except for like the grocery stores and a lot of the food is takeout now at restaurants and, and, and fast food places. So, um, you know, again, it's, it, it's a small sacrifice to stay healthy, but uh, Hey, I real quick, I want to jump back just to the Zito two for a second. A couple guys in chat have posted that they're having very good luck with the one, one dot one dot nine firmware that came out on Saturday. That's cured a lot of their, their problems. Like with the, the, you know the drifting all over and the uh, rough landings and whatever. So um, I just want to give a shout out to uh, if you haven't downloaded firmware update one dot one nine, go out and get it. It seems to be uh, working well for everybody. Okay, now back to our regularly scheduled programming. Actually, I got, I got a question on the Xeno since I'm not the, the I'm not a xenophobe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry, I, I had to do it. Oh, that was good. <laughs> Uh, can you guys not do sensor calibrations on those like you can on, on the DJI products? Yeah, there's what they call a, uh, a horizontal calibration. Which I think is the IMU. is re That's the rename for the IMU. On that DJI. is what they're calling the IMU. And it's, yeah. and it's not like a DJI drone. You just set it down on a flat surface. You hit the button and, oh, 10 seconds, it's done. Uh, it's not, you know, on a, on a DJI drone where you tilt it on each side and so forth. It's not like that. Uh, it does have a gimbal calibration that you do on the gimbal menu. And, 
you know, that seems to work pretty well. And then, of course, uh, magnetic calibration. Okay, because I'm not sure if a lot of people are aware of it, but like if you use DJI Assistant, you can actually do uh, sensor calibrations. Mm-hmm. I don't know if, if you guys have ever done that or not, but uh, it's probably a good practice to do it once a year. Okay. Uh, but uh, I was just wondering if that might uh, might resolve that uh, bottom sensor issue on, on well, the Xeno. I, I haven't looked at um, what the desktop um, software looks like like on the Xeno 2 yet, uh, you know, the Xeno 1, you could only use the desktop software to do your uh, firmware update. So in our community, we're so happy to be doing it over the phone that uh, most of them haven't hooked it up to the computer yet, but that's a good thought, Lauren, and that's something Marcus and I can investigate going forward. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know, how many of you guys watch Unbox Therapy at all? Do any of you guys watch watch him? He's he's a pretty big yeah. he a lot, lot of phones and and computers and tech gear and everything. I think he's out of Toronto, okay. And he did it was just it, it was a great video because you know he's saying you know I had to make a decision today whether or not the staff should come in and we do filming today. And he said no. And he said what what he what he thought was you know um, as long as he can do it himself. Uh, and not, you know, have contact around other people, you know, c- try to keep them safe. But one of the things that he brought up, and I really like this, and, and I think this is key here, and I think we all kind of touched upon this, okay, is, you know, Marcus says, you know, I got the, I get this giddy feeling when I'm done. I feel like a, like a, like a, a 12-year-old, okay, that just, you know, found, um, you know, found the, the baseball card of his dreams, you know. It's it's you, you get that you feeling a euphoria after flying a drone and and I think it's important that we still kind of crank out some videos during this time because as the guy from Unbox Therapy said and I forgive me because I and I don't remember his name you know he said it's going to be good for people to get their minds off of things for a few minutes okay and if I can get out a video about the Mavic Two and um, you know, go flying through mists in the morning or, you know, Ron, get out another video of a sunset with a Xeno 2 or, you know, Marcus, get another one with a just absolutely picturesque view of the Snake River Canyon, you know, or, or Lauren going out in the country and, and get it, capturing some incredible sh- shots out there. You know, these kind of things, I think, really are, are kind of like you know, chicken soup for the soul kind of things. Okay. I think it, it helps all of us and it helps all of us during this kind of time because, you know, everybody's so all pent up and, 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 and on edge and, and everything. And I think it really helps take that edge off. I think that was the word I was looking for, you know, and Marcus described it real well. You know, it's like when I'm done flying, I'm, I'm the same way, you know, when I'm done and I pick up that drone, I got a smile on my face. Okay. You know, here I am, you know, being able to fly something like this and, you know, which I, you know, and I, and I hearken back to my childhood and, you know, flying those gas powered Cox planes growing up, you know, just going around in a circle. And I thought it was the bomb. And here I am, you know, pretty much flying an aircraft, videotaping things and bringing it back and just having some gorgeous videos from this. Hey, hey, Bill, you just answered a question in the chat here. RC Master master is asking us if we fly anything but drones and you're talking about those little cox airplanes they were a lot of fun i remember that too but to your point rc mask master i have been out to the park a couple times and i've seen some guys out there flying some rc planes uh the electric ones hey it looks kind of fun and you know what it's not very expensive either ah there's there you go. That's I mean that's that's that that's really that's that's really fantastic as far as far as that's concerned. I mean, oh, good guys do some. You watch those guys do some of the aerobatics they do. Oh, I know. Yeah, I've I've seen them because I'm you know I I live by a field right up right up by me and these guys are just I mean and it's insane. You talk about spending money, okay? Um, there's some aircraft that they build. That you know they're spending thirty five, forty thousand dollars on some of these planes. Okay, that's just driving insane. But the detail and the realism on some of them are just you know off the charts. It real, it really is. You know, so I think all of us are kind of in agreement that you know this is going to be a good thing. And you know, it's you know, 
you can still live your lives inside four walls, so to speak, okay, and get, and get out and, and fly and stuff, but but be very careful of, and limit you limit your exposure, okay. Um, you know, g g follow the practices that, that that the government's been talking about. Your government, you know, with us, you know, they're talking about keeping a, a din distance of at least six feet from people, uh, and, and I think that's important. You hey, know, no, I've, I've got a question for the group. Uh, unfortunately, excluding Lauren. Uh, <laughs> what are you guys going to do with your government check? <laughs> Thanks, Marcus. Thanks a lot. <laughs> well, maybe, well, maybe Canada's giving a check out too, Marcus. Well, it could be. Uh, actually, yeah, yeah. actually what, one thing I want to point out to people, and this is a, kind of a very important public service thing, but there's a lot of people think that we're going to be over this in two weeks, you know, and they're saying now self-isolate for 14 days if you have symptoms, but they're trying to flatten out the curve. So uh, we're probably not going to see the end of this until May, June at the earliest, you know, mm -hmm. um, it, it's what, once the numbers start going down uh, of the infections, uh, then it's going to, you know, it's going to get better and the panic's going to stop. But, uh, to think this is all going to be over in a week or two, uh, absolutely not. Because, like I say, they're, they're trying to flatten that curve so that the the uh, hospitals and stuff can handle it. That's a very good point, Lauren. I think, you know, um, a lot of us in, you know, whether you agree or disagree with, with our president, he's right. You know, we're, we're in this for, for a while. It's, it's going to be a battle, and it's really more of a marathon and not a sprint here, Okay. Um, so, you know, get your supplies, but don't go overboard on stuff. Okay. It's just, it's just insanity. Okay. Now I, I got my first taste of this when I was down here for my first hurricane here in Florida. Okay. And seeing it, you know, the bread, bread shelf was empty. And in this case, okay. During a hurricane water was gone. Okay. You couldn't find any water batteries as well too, you know, cause people need, needed, needed batteries. Um, you know, um, canned food, foods, you know, like Chef Boyardee, things like that, gone. Any kind of prep meals, you know, like Denny Moore and all that, gone. Any kind of canned meat, gone. Okay. It's just, you know, people just, just, and then they were limiting you to get one gallon of water, two gallons of water per person. Okay. When, when they actually got water back in stock. So, I mean, it was just, and here we are with this and, you know, and it's just like, here we are with toilet paper. Okay. Um, and you know, people just going after other things as well too. Um, like for example, you can't find rubbing alcohol, Lysol wipes, bleach anywhere. Um, you know, good luck trying to find all those items, even online. Good luck trying to find all those items. So, you know, hey, it, no, yes, a piece of news about that that I think is worth talking about. So, uh, evidently Amazon is right now trying to clear out their warehouses of, ancillary stuff. In other words, they're not taking inbound shipments of things like toys and drones and so forth because they're trying to make room for those kind of products so that they can uh, they can get them out to people. So, I mean, that's probably good news. I mean, it sounds like they're anticipating uh, that there's this supply issue. And if they can make things like sanitary wipes and, and uh, disinfectant wipes and, and toilet paper and all those things that are people, people are hoarding, widely available, then it'll calm it down and it'll stop. And, uh, and, and good on Amazon, I think. For yeah, that. that's, that's really, I mean, you know, and, and I have to say this, you know, and I know we're, we're talking about the virus here and everything, but, you know, um, I think it's important. And, and I think, you know, it affects all of us, you know, whether, you know, we're, we're here in the States or in Canada or over in the UK or, or Ireland or Europe, um, you know, some areas are getting hit really hard, like Italy. Italy's getting absolutely pounded right now, and they learned their lesson. Spain did things a little bit too late, unfortunately, and they're going to get pounded as well, too. And, and, and I think maybe if, and, you know, if, if everybody really kind of does their job here, especially here in the States and, and up in Canada, you know, we can stay ahead of this curve, okay? We can help our healthcare system out by practicing these things that, that they're talking about. I think it's important. And Marcus brought up a good point, okay? 
th there's a lot of cooperation with private sector, like for instance, for Amazon. Okay. I think that's fantastic. Them doing this. All right. Because, you know, while they're out to make money, they're also out to make sure that things are available for people. And, and I also got a hand in Amazon, uh, this as well and eBay. Last week I saw, uh, and in fact, I saw pictures on Twitter. Uh, there were these two brothers in Tennessee that rented a U-Haul van and they went to every Walmart, you know, in a couple of states that they could get go to. And they filled up this U-Haul truck with nothing but Clorox wipes and everything. And then they were trying to sell it on Amazon and eBay and price gouge. OK, Amazon and eBay said, no, you're done. You're not you're not selling any of this on there. So there they are. They have a garage full of of Clorox wipes, of of, of cleaners, you know, everything. And they can't sell them. All right. And, and I got to hand it out to retailers as well, too, because you know what? We're all part of this thing called the human race. And, you know, like it or not, you know, we need we need to we need to get along with each other right now. OK, there's just there's just no there's just no ifs, ands or buts about it. And I'm sorry for turning this into this kind of a show tonight, but I think it's important. And, and, and I think it's important that we all kind of get a grasp on things and say, you know what, um, you know, j put our differences aside and, and and cooperate. You know, it's it's a nice thing to see people reaching across the aisle and doing things and getting things done in our nation's capital. OK, it, it's a, it's rare to see that, but it's, it's a welcome sight, you know, and I think, unfortunately, the last time we saw that kind of cooperation was in another big tragedy was 9-11. But but this is even uh, on a magnitude that we, we can't comprehend right now because we don't know. We don't know everything. But enough of all this. OK, I, I think we're I think I've kind of exhausted that, um, you know. Gentlemen, do you have anything you'd like to share this evening? Yeah, let's get back to drones. <laughs> I, I think we should be. I think Lauren should be telling us more about that uh, that new Mavic or what people have called the Mavic Air Two, but it's probably just going to be a Mavic. Any more news on that? Uh, not really. I pretty much uh, let you guys have it all last time. Other than, like I say, the, the latest news that I got today was that they they may be delaying it further because, as I said, um, they don't want to have a party and nobody show up. So, uh, but as soon as I get that big box of warm air from from Bill, I, I've got a great trip planned. Uh, I want to do a single day video that's going to be in the mountains, on the plains, and in the badlands, and finish off in a ghost town. How does that sound for one interesting day of video? I uh, like that. That, yeah, sound, that sounds really go. good. <laughs> well, you know, okay, I wanted to ask you this, Lauren, and I know I think we kind of chatted a little bit online about this, okay? Um, hey, Kesterloo and Drone DJ you know, puts out something about the new Mavic or the, the Mavic or Mavic being seven ninety nine, And I, what are your, I, I know what your thoughts are, but why don't you share them? Price price point that I've got uh, was Canadian dollars and basically uh, U.S. price is, is, what what is it right now? It's about 70, 72 cents uh, for our dollar. No okay. or vice versa, <laughs> whatever it is. But uh, yeah, you guys are about 30, 35% cheaper. So if that works out to the prices I had mentioned, then yeah, you could go with that. Okay. So, but uh, I'm telling uh, you, it's seven ninety nine. they won't be able to keep them in stock. I mean, I'm actually fun. thinking it's going to be closer to, for you guys, probably about eight forty nine. Oh, is what I'm okay. that's, that's doable. Hey, I mean, you know, and hey, here's you know, the I got, kicker. I got something for Lauren real fast before we get off this topic. Um, sure. I watched a I watched a recent video by 51 Drones. That's Russ. I don't know if you watch his channel. But he was speculating on the Mavic, uh, well, the, the Mavic or the Mavic Air 2, whatever you prefer to call it. And he speculated that uh, not only would it have uh, OcuSync 2, but it would have even a new form of OcuSync that's better than uh, OcuSync 2. He didn't say OcuSync 3, I don't believe, but he thinks it's going to have a better OcuSync than we have on our Mavic 2s. Have you heard any chatter about that? Well, as I said, that that uh, that new controller that they've got uh, leaves a lot of things 
mm. to question. Mm -hmm. But uh, that being said, I still believe there should be probably compatibility between that and the smart controller. And all, all I know for a fact is they said it will have better communication. So mm. uh, what exactly that means, it's open to interpretation. But you know, and so I think that's so important. I think you, you brought up a good point there, Lauren and Ron, too, with 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 this, because, you know, and, and I didn't get a chance to see Russ's video, but having OcuSync 2.0 on that makes it compatible with the smart controller. And if that's the case and if that happens, that's going it, to it, it's it's like, how do you get that much better in that kind of a package for, say, 849 and, and be able to use the smart controller with it? have a great communication system with it, um, shoot incredible video with this, have 360 obstacle avoidance, have ADS-B on this. Uh, I mean, it's like, it's like okay, um, government, here, thank you for my okay. money. DJI, here's my money, okay? Um, Let, let's bring up one, one other thing marketing-wise. So now we've got this thing that's uh, OcuSync 2 compatible, we're assuming. And when it comes to actually selling it, you can buy the standard controller, which we've seen in the pictures, or you can buy it with a smart controller for an additional oh, cost. You, right? you just nailed it. That's what I'm after. And that's, that's, I, uh, that's again, further thought for me on, on why it's going to be OcuSync 2, because it'll be compatible with the existing smart controller and, and bundled with that. I mean, having that bundle, I mean, ask Ron, I mean, you know, that, that probably tipped him over the scale of being able to get his Mavic two pro with the smart controller bundled all in one, all in one, one, one package. I think and, that was, and, and save a nice bit of cash by doing oh, it. Yeah. yeah. Well, what you saved what, 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 it was like $200, right, Ron? I think more than, that. I think close to the 250, 300 by, um, you know, getting the bundle rather than buying it individually and then having a controller. I didn't really need it. Well, Unless you want to do like Lawrence said, have a two man control. But I want to answer your question: How could this? How could this be any better? You know, you said all the things that this new Mavic has. Well, they could upgrade to the Lee's 2.0 operating system that the Hubson <laughs> runs, right, Marcus? <laughs> well, you know what? We're not, we're not laughing. It, it's listen. It works really good so far. I mean, I the, the furthest I took it out was a kilometer, but uh, but it was a solid. Good FPV the whole way, and I think Ron had the same experience for a three hundred ninety nine. And I know we keep saying three ninety nine. That was a that was the pre price. Well, let's say four ninety nine. I think is the list price for four ninety nine. They have that kind of FPV range of signal strength, and I don't. You know, like some drones say they have this, and the FPV will, will break up, especially when you get a certain distance out. But this right. thing's pretty rock solid. I'm, I've had it up to two hundred. I've had it uh, beyond two hundred feet out now. With no breakup in the FPV at all, and I mean, it still looks good at at the two at two hundred two thousand feet out or whatever. So, um, yeah, it's it's an impressive communication system for non DJI drone. Yeah, yeah, I would I would you know you guys were telling me that sharing that last night, and I know Ron was also talking about like the Femi X eight how said probably what um you know five hundred feet out and FPV starts to break up. You start. You're, well, you're, yeah, you're, and, and it just gets so grainy that, like, you know, it's it's hard to frame your photographs and video. The FPV is still there, but it's just, you know, it, it looks like you remember snow on your TV when you had the rabbit ears when you were young. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. you know, exciting things are coming. You know, the, this Mavic or Mavic or Mavic Air 2. You know whatever it's going to be named here. You know that that's that's around the corner. Even if it's going to be May or June, um, being delayed because of, of everything going on with the pandemic, um, so be it. And I think you know it kind of gives people something to look forward to. Okay, like I'm still looking forward to my Hubson too. Whenever it gets here, okay. However it gets here, um, you know. And, and I think that's a good thing. And I think also too, you know, with the possibility of getting some extra cash on hand that's not gonna that's not gonna hurt you know and you know it, it kind of gives people and i think too you know it kind of it kind of helps us all out you know it kind of gets our mind off of things and, and and gets us going in the right direction so you know it's exciting with with everything that we're gonna we're gonna probably have with the mavic air 2 um you know i'm really gonna look forward to it. that kind of a price point it, it's like it's like marcus i might beat marcus to hitting that buy button okay 
I might do that. Okay, for once, <laughs> that doesn't have that does not happen that often though. But when it does, it's a monumental event. <laughs> you got to burn up that plastic, buddy. Oh my. Okay. Well, you know what? Had a good show. We had a lot of great discussion tonight. Uh, touched on a lot of topics. Talked about the Xeno two and your guys' success with it. Um, you know, and just some great videos. And go see Ron's and Marcus's latest videos on the Xeno two. Mark, I know Ron has some more coming out. I know Marcus will be getting some more out shortly as well. Um, you know, so stay tuned for those. Um, you know, I'm really looking forward to seeing some of those. Um, and you know, having that Xeno one has really helped me. And I think I'll better be able to appreciate my Xeno two when I get it. And, and be able to tell the differences that I get and also be able to compare the two, you know, that's probably going to be some makes make for some good videos. Um, you know, we also talked about, you know, should Autel hold off? Should DJI hold off on, on, you know, releasing drones in, at this time of year, um, you know, with everything going on and, you know, and the kind of the consensus was, you know, it's probably going to be a good thing for them to keep fulfilling their orders is, is they promised, you know, Autel had said, you know, middle to end of March and we're there right now. And so hopefully they'll get gearing up and, you know, it's something for people to look forward to at this point. And, you know, DJI has really never announced anything. So, you know, delaying it to May, June, um, you know, that's not, that's not really going to be a lot, um, you know, while we'll be anxious for it, you know, it'll give us something to look forward to as far as that's concerned. And then, you know, also talking some more about the Mavic 2 and, and just Mavic Air 2 and, you know, what, you know, some of the possibilities and the pricing on that. I think that was a good thing as well. So we're going to go around. We're going to share some closing thoughts here tonight. Marcus, take it away. Yeah, well, like you said, Bill, it, it, it's, you know, everybody's kind of subdued right now with, with everything that's uh, – with going on everybody's hunkered down at home and so forth but that shouldn't necessarily stop us from uh enjoying our drones and uh, i would encourage everybody as long as you can uh, uh keep that social distancing that they're asking us to do and get out your fly your drone and like bill said boy we, we all have plenty of time to look at youtube right now so get those videos up and uh and let's get after it yeah so, sorry for ducking out guys there i was uh uh, dealing with a couple of phone calls. I've been working on a good deal for members of my group, and uh, I think they're going to be pretty happy with it. Uh, and I just got confirmation that it did go through, so it will be announced to my guys shortly. That being said, yeah, everybody stay safe. Get out and find a nice, desolate, beautiful place to fly. Get lots of pictures, lots of video, and show us what you got. Thank you, Lauren. Um, and uh, Lauren was really ducking off camera there because his his uh, his new DJI Mavic drone was being uh, uh, secretly shipped to him for review. <laughs> NDA, NDA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can't show, but but I, I got a I got a favor to ask Bill. Um, yes. After this show, uh, uh, Michael uh, from Philly Drone Life and I go on live episode three of our show, which I'm. Don't know if we have a name yet or not, but I'm logged in this in the chat here as Zeno Nation, and I'm not an administrator. Could you go to the private chat and copy and drop the link to Mike's show in the uh, in the chat for me, Bill? I thought you were an admin, Ron. Let me. Well, I, I am, but Zeno Nation is not. Oh, Zeno Nation is. Well, let yeah, me get, no. let me take care of that. Well, okay. Well, while he's taking that care of that, I want to thank everybody uh, for coming on, being part of the chat, leaving your great comments and questions as usual. And uh, I encourage everybody to, to leave a, uh, a thumbs up on the way out if you haven't already done that so far. Uh, you know, and I want to thank uh, Marcus and, uh, you know, and Lauren for being the pal tonight. Lauren's uh, always got some good news for us, uh, you know, well. Maybe maybe not good news as far as the yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but new, news anyways, you know, and um, you know news you can use as you used to say. So um, yeah, that, that's all I got to say tonight. Uh, you know, be safe, everybody. Um, you know, do what you can to stop the spread of this, uh, you know, this uh, horrible virus. And uh, you know, if we all work together, I think we can you know, get through this in a timely fashion. And uh, you know, I'm going to throw it over to Bill for uh, let us close out for the night. Well, I posted a link for your show 
So it's, it's there. Much. Definitely, you want to check that out. If you guys, you gotta love, you gotta love Ron with Mikey there. M M Mikey's uh, just a great guy. You just can't help but but like him. Okay, so definitely check that out. Uh, smash smash that like button for 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 Marcus and Lauren and Ron. They do exceptional work on the show here, and this show would not be anything without the three of them contributing. So make sure you do that because that's a nice way of being able to say thank you for your hard work. Uh, and these guys do work very hard, and all three of them bring up excellent points. And that's why that's why I want to bring you guys the best here. Okay, and I and I know I've got the best here. And, um, you know, just just make sure you do that, because that's a wonderful way of being able to thank them um, for that. Um, you know, I want to, th you know, and, and, you know, some closing thoughts, you know, stay safe, keep social distancing, but definitely go ahead and make sure that, you know, you get a chance. Go out and fly your drone, find a remote area, get out there, you know, keep your social distance from things. Get out there, take some video you know, um, you know, just enjoy it and enjoy that and, and stay safe and, and, you know, uh, practice what, the, what, what, what they're telling you, what the authorities are telling you, you know, and we'll all get through this together, like Ron said. And when we come out on the other side, you know, you know, we'll be able to, you know, let out a big exhale and, you know, we'll be able to go out and finally rub elbows and shake hands and, and, you know, and, and to have social interaction again, you know, but until that time, enjoy things like flying your drone, enjoy watching other YouTube videos out there. You know, I, I strongly encourage you besides, you know, Ron and Marcus and their channels um, to go out to other channels like Mikey's channel, you know, Philly Drone Life, um, Billy Kyle, Ken Dobo, Original Dobo, you know, Rick Smith. Um, Kelly Shores, you know, go out to other channels, enjoy some of these videos. Okay. You know, th there is a wonderful amount of content on YouTube regarding drones out there. There's a lot. I mean, you know, uh, and that's what I tell people, you know, YouTube is great because, you know, this, everything stays out there. You know, it's, you know, I, I look right now, I think I have over 600 videos that I've put out and cranked out in three years time. I mean, that's, that's, that's a lot, but you know, it's something I enjoy doing. I know Ron and Marcus enjoy doing it. I know Lauren loves to fly, um, you know, and he's doing some things. And also, too, I want to put a plug in for Lauren's group. Um, you know, I know we talked about it last week, but th this is something that you really need to take a look at. You know, I'm going to make sure there'll be a link in the description for you guys to check it out. You know, drones for good. I mean, how can you not how can you not want to join something like that? Because, you know, it's good news. You see good stories out there. You hear good things. And, you know, and Romeo Dersher has given his blessing to this. And, as you know, uh, Romeo's like um, probably my no, probably I, I would definitely say one of my favorite DJI employees because I actually do know him and he's just an absolute great guy. So, with all that being said, okay, everyone, please be safe. Um, you know, practice your social distancing. We'll get through all this together. And remember, it's always a great day to fly. Take care, everybody. Take care. <laughs>